Hello, I'm Mr. Burton and in this video we are going to be looking at the non-price determinants of supply. Uh, so we're going to be looking at the factors which will shift the supply curve to the right or shift it to the left. Okay, so hopefully you know from my previous videos that the supply curve is upward sloping and the supply curve shows us the quantity of goods or services that producers are willing and able to supply at any given price at any given time. So at this price level, for example at P1, we can see here that producers are willing and able, we assume they're willing and able, uh, to supply a quantity of Q1. So now we need to see what determinants might actually shift the supply curve inwards and shift the supply curve outwards. The factors I like to use in an exam are C steps, as shown. So I like to use C steps and let's go through those quickly and then we'll see how they can relate to the supply curve and how they might shift it inwards or shift it outwards. Okay so I've written up the uh, non-price determinants of supply just there so let's go through those quickly. We have the costs of factors of production, we have subsidies, that's government subsidies, we have government taxes, uh, we have expectations uh, from the firm. We also have the price of other products that the um, firm could produce instead. And lastly, the last one I like to use anyway, is the state of technology that the firm is, has uh, access to. Okay, so firstly, let's look at the costs of factors of production. Factors of production, remember, are the uh, land, labour, capital and enterprise that the firm uses. So let's say the costs of labour, for example, have gone up. So now the firm is not um, able to supply the same amount as they were before uh, for the same price. So at this price level, because their costs have gone up, the firm actually has to uh, shift its supply curve inwards to S2. The costs have gone up. So the firm is now uh, unable to actually uh, supply the same amount as before at the same price level. Um, so we've gone from S1 and we shifted the supply curve inwards to S2. So at that price level there is a smaller quantity that the firm is able to supply. Okay, next up is subsidies. So let's imagine that the government is giving subsidies to uh, a firm producing Nike shoes. Um, subsidies are uh, is money given to uh, a firm to reduce its costs. So if the firm is getting subsidies, the government is giving them money to reduce their costs, their costs are getting less. So at any price level, the firm is actually able to supply a lot more of those products. Their costs have gone down, so they're able to supply more. So at that price level of P1, we can now see that the firm is able to supply a quantity of Q3. So subsidies have gone up and therefore the supply curve has shifted to the right. More quantity supplied by the firm. What about taxes? Well, taxes are the opposite of subsidies uh, in some ways. So the uh, government is now taxing the firm. That means the firm has more costs. Higher costs because taxes are money that the firm has to pay to the government. Uh, if taxes have gone up then, their costs are higher. And so their supply curve shifts inwards. They're unable now, at the same price level, to uh, produce this quantity. They have to now produce um, at Q2 at P1. Next up is expectations. Um, so the way we look at expectations is the firm decides by looking at some market data whether they think that in the future there's going to be a higher demand for their goods. If in the future they think there's going to be a higher demand, uh, we assume that the firm is therefore going to uh, shift their supply curve to the right. That's because they want to actually be ready for that increase in demand that they expect later on. So we can say that if expectations uh, increase, then the uh, supply curve is going to shift to the right. They are going to supply more at that price level because in the future they expect the demand to go up and they want to be ready for that. 
if their expectations have actually fallen and they don't think that in the future there's going to be a high demand, they think demand might fall, then the supply curve is going to shift inwards. They're going to supply less at the same price level because they simply think that in the future all the quantity that they're producing is not going to get sold. So they're just getting ready for their future predictions. That's what expectations looks at. Okay, so the price of other products then. This one is very important when we're looking at a neoclassical viewpoint. Um, because neoclassical um, economists believe that we can easily jump from one market to another market, produce one good, and then suddenly produce another good um, very easily. In reality, you can see that might not be true. But let's say it is. So the price of other products, let's say we're producing Nike shoes, um, and then suddenly the price of t-shirts goes up. So the price of t-shirts have gone up, but nothing's happened to the price of Nike shoes. So we would assume that some companies producing Nike shoes would say, well, we can make more money producing t-shirts. So the demand, uh, supply curve, sorry, would shift inwards. They'd supply less Nike shoes uh, because they'd be jumping into the t-shirt market instead. So either the firm would produce less um, Nike shoes or firms would simply leave the market and so supply would shift to the left as well. So if the price of other products um, goes up, we would see a supply curve shift to the left. If the price of other products goes down, let's say the price of t-shirts goes down, firms will see that nothing's happened to the Nike shoe market and they jump into the Nike shoe market instead, away from producing t-shirts. So the supply curve in the Nike shoe industry would shift to the right. Um, this one is a really important one to discuss and talk about because you can start to pick up on whether in reality it's that easy to jump from one market to another without lots of costs involved as well. Lastly, we're going to look at the state of technology. So let's assume that we are using a machine to produce our shoes. The machine before was able to produce 100 uh, Nike shoes, but now our state of technology has increased. So now we, are, we have a machine that's able to produce 150 shoes instead of 100, and our costs haven't changed at all. So if our technology increases, um, we are able to actually produce uh, a lot more goods, either because our costs have gone down because our technology is better, or our costs have stayed the same, but we're just able to produce more goods with that machinery. So if our state of technology increases, our supply will shift to the right at the same given price. In the same um, aspect, if our technology decreases, let's say there is a, a natural disaster that destroys a lot of our machinery um, or a virus in our, our computers, uh, we suddenly have a shutdown of production um, and that might last for a while and the price has stayed the same but now we're able to produce a lot less than we were before. So our supply curve shifts inwards. Um, so state of technology, depending on what happens within that, we can see differences in our shifts in supply. Okay, so with non-price determinants of supply, stick to our C steps um, and discuss those and discuss how changes in our C steps will actually shift our supply curve to the right or to the left um, and remember, we always assume that the price level has not changed at all, um, but our non-price determinants actually shift our supply. We're able and willing to supply more or less with the same price level if these non-price determinants change in the marketplace. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe below and comment for any other topics you want me to cover in my next videos.